uh, I welcome you from Ruby Russia conference, that's 10th Ruby Russia conference uh, hold in great uh, venue place. Uh, my name is Grigory Petrov. I am a technology evangelist at Evron and right now we have a special guest in our studio, a person behind Ruby uh, language, the founder of Ruby language, Yakihira Matsumoto. Konnichiwa Matsumoto-san. Uh, so, uh, this is your second uh, visit to Russia. Uh, first one was in year 2016. And since that, uh, our Ruby community on the conference doubled. Uh, I was uh, at your talk. Uh, it was amazing. And I already know answers for some of my questions. And I saw that lots of people are not only asking you questions and communicate, they also take photos with you, take our photographs, and uh, you are a star for them. <laughs> uh, you really are a star because uh, we software developers, we are social and we like to feel uh, supported, we like uh, the uh, language offer actually helps us and communicate with us. But such uh, behavior, uh, when people uh, take photos and autographs, is it something specific to Russia or is it worldwide? Uh, the taking photo with them is the worldwide, in every country, uh, in every uh, com country, in every conference that people want to take photo with me. And uh, different is the, uh, relatively many people ask me to, for the signatures. Uh, it is uh, the Russian statistic, I, I think. What is one thing that you are asked the most? from software developers, what do they ask for? I am from the language X, and then why don't you uh, put the feature Y from language X into Ruby or something like that? But uh, uh, the basic, uh, basic answer is no, because of the, we have the different language design and different language policy, but uh, we can just take uh, some arbitrary feature from language X into Ruby. But uh, in some cases, we steal some ideas from other languages like Python, JavaScript, or even Elixir. So that uh, it's asked very often, but I respond positively uh, in very rare cases. What do you think about type uh, annotations? Why they are so popular? And uh, what are your general ideas and plans for type checking in Ruby 3 and beyond? Recent programming languages like uh, the Swift and Go and Rust, uh, those programming languages are statically typed programming languages. And uh, be mostly because of the uh, our software base is growing, uh, growing pretty fast, and uh, we sometimes have to maintain a very huge code base, like uh, millions of lines of code, and uh, and uh, with uh, you know hundreds of members of the team. So that uh, in those cases, so that uh, type checking is very convenient and useful because of the you know we have we can detect errors earlier and uh, more thoroughly. Uh, otherwise, in a dynamic type programming language like Ruby, we have to write tests to ensure the type of the value or something like that. So the, 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 as software grows, the burden of tests also grows. Then that's the reason behind the recent the popularity of the static typing. But uh, at the same time, uh, the static type, especially static type declaration, is verbose and uh, redundant because you know 
In Ruby, we don't have any type of notation, but our Ruby program just runs. That means uh, the type of notation itself is somewhat redundant. So the, I want, we want the benefit of static type checking, but uh, we don't want the verbosity and the redundancy of the type declaration. So the, we, the, as a Ruby community, well, Ruby language, we try to satisfy both at the same time. So the one thing is the we are going to have the separate type information files uh, from the Ruby program so that the Europe Ruby program does not contain any static type information, but uh, the separated type information file, we call the Ruby signature file, uh, contains the type information of the libraries, gems, and the your programs. And then in addition, we are going to provide the tools named the type profiler, which can uh, collect the type information of your software. And then, then you, the type profiler can detect the uh, type uh, type contradiction, type conflict of your software, then and the generate the type signature from the, the static type analysis of your software. In addition, you can refine your type signature, your type information of your software by hand to have the better type checking. So the uh, Collecting, after collecting those type of information of the library and your software, so that you can have the, all the type of information of all the classes, all the methods, so that you can uh, check the full static uh, type check. So that in future Ruby, so you can check the type statically in, uh, in some degree. So the, the very low degree, you have the, you know, the traditional Ruby behavior, which does the every type checking run in runtime. Then the level one is the uh, using the, the standard class library type information and then the comparing to the your software so that you can find the contradiction between the uh, the type information, so that uh, you can cover the, I don't know, 40 to 80 percent of the type, uh, type, your type errors can be detected in the type level one type checker. The, after generating all the type information of your software, so that you can have the full uh, static type checking. The, by using those tools, you can find almost complete type, uh, static type checking. So this, which is the level two type checker. The, by providing those tools so that the future Ruby will be statically type checked uh, without any type of notation in your software. And uh, about the future of Ruby language, it's great that you conduct uh, experiments, test uh, ideas. Uh, what future do you see uh, for Ruby? What way do you steer the language? Actually, I wouldn't uh, steer the language or the community. I just provide the technology and the community decide to which way to go. But uh, at least we have enough technology to have the, as many domains uh, as possible to utilize the Ruby's flexibility and the productivity. For example, so the Ruby is mostly used in, to, to build a web application right now, but uh, I want to see Ruby in, say, the, the the computation, uh, research computing, or AI things, or machine learning, or maybe in the embedding field, so that uh, we try to uh, enhance technology to suitable for to use in those dom uh, new domains. 
how do you like to name Ruby to a uh, position it? Uh, maybe your name or something from a uh, community. How do you uh, uh, refer to the language? I would name Ruby as uh, the productive programming language. Mm -hmm. That's great name. Yeah. The productivity is one of the, the biggest goal, primary goals uh, of Ruby programming language. So the and then otherwise, so that I designed Ruby for human, the, the programmers, not for machines. So that, uh, for example, so that from the core, core contributors sometimes complain about the design of the language because of that it's difficult to, to implement uh, efficiently so that but uh, Ruby's design is not focusing on performance first but uh, productivity first so the, that that means we the implementers have uh, the bigger challenge but uh, we accept that, that challenge so that we try to make Ruby uh, as productive for developers at the same time as performant as possible. Just uh, imagine if you have an opportunity to time travel back in time and give only one advice to younger uh, self uh, <laughs> at the time you started the mm -hmm. Ruby language development. What advice can it be? Don't mimic too much from other scripting language. The, your programming language will be uh, the web-based general purpose programming language. In it, uh, that means that too much focusing on scripting uh, is, will be some kind of appendix in the future. <laughs> what do you see as your greatest uh, design uh, success? Uh, what do you like uh, most about the features you added? Uh, if I have to pick one thing yes. from the language, I would say blocks. Yeah, the Ruby block is quite unique and uh, it's quite a useful abstraction of the, the high higher order function, and it's, but uh, it's much simpler than other language. It's restricted, but it's uh, convenient. So the, yeah, block is the, and the language like a Swift, Groovy, and uh, yeah, the, yeah, accepted the, the last, the last argument, when last argument is the, the anonymous function, you can put the braces out of the, the argument list. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that is kind of works like a, the block. And, then it's, and then even JavaScript is the, the, that kind of uh, language feature is proposal, proposed. So that, yeah, I'm very proud of that. <laughs> is it uh, something in Ruby design, Ruby evolution that you dislike a lot? and that you can call a biggest uh, design uh, failure that should be fixed or which is already fixed? I have some. Uh, the one of them is the global variables, especially the global variable inherited from Paul, oh, which yes, uh, yes. the dollar, say, semicolon or dollar uh, slash or something like that. And then those things are kind of the appendix. So that when we are the mere scripting language, so that it, it is sometimes useful, but uh, now we don't, that no one uses it any longer. So that, the, and then, and I regret about adding threads to the language because the current uh, behavior of the, of the thread is uh, hard to use and hard to debug. So that we should have better uh, concurrency abstraction. And then, uh, besides that, we have some object uh, needlessly immutable. I mean, so that, for example, we can change the, you know, the time zone of the existing time object instead of the creating the, 
a time object belong to a specific time zone. So that, that was kind of my design mistake. So that, other than that, we have several other objects which is needlessly mutable. So that I regret that. Yeah, scope rules, mutability rules, they are always uh, tricky because uh, software developers, we tend to write source code different ways and design solution that is perfectly fine for one way uh, can be surprisingly clumsy for other uh, ways. So um, uh, I think it's uh, enough for technical uh, questions and um, Ruby. Uh, we uh, are social creatures, uh, so let's talk a little bit about social uh, mm -hmm. things. And uh, I think that everyone uh, will be interested. Uh, how you organize your work on language, how your work day looks like? How do you start your day? How do you work? And uh, how it is organized? Actually, I am a full-time Ruby developer, so that I spend half of my time thinking about the design of the, the future Ruby, especially Ruby 3. And then the other half uh, of the, the developing the alternative Ruby implementation named MRuby, so that uh, for C Ruby, the canonical Ruby implementation is uh, done by the core contributors and uh, who are smarter than me actually. And then, so that I only need to make decisions so that, okay, uh, this method should behave like this and this language feature should be, uh, the syntax is this and uh, behavior, uh, semantics is this and uh, I just make decisions so that the other uh, this developers uh, implement those kind of those methods and features. But, uh, but uh, as a, I am a half designer and a half uh, programmer, so that as a programmer, I maintain the, the MRuby implementation. So that, yeah, I spend not a half, but a one third or something. When part of my time working as a the programmer on top of MRuby. And uh, I programmed some, uh, I visited some other uh, projects, but uh, yeah, I spent most of the time as a designer and a programmer. Do you have any uh, free time, any hobbies? Uh, what do you do for well-being to not be burned out? I'm luckily spend full time on open source software so that I have no pressure from the clients. And then uh, I have no, you know, the irritating bosses <laughs> so that I, I manage myself. So that, that's one of the reasons I can be relaxed at the, at the work. That besides that, so that I have actually no specific deadline besides the release date. So that actually the, those freedom makes me feel relaxed. Then what is one, one secret? The other is I try to spend time not re related to the computers and the programming at all. For example, I spend some time walking with my dog, <laughs> petting my cat, and then I sometimes, sometimes do some church service for my, my local church or something. I spend my time with my family and uh, those kind of the social life uh, relax me a lot. Software developers from Russia that uh, use uh, Ruby, uh, many of them uh, actually like Japan uh, a lot, uh, watch anime, manga, and uh, some of them visit uh, Japan. So as a native uh, Japanese and software developer, what places or experiences or actions can you recommend to fellow software developers, Ruby software developers who would visit uh, Japan? Uh, Japan is a pretty diverse uh, country so that you can, uh, you can see the metrop very metropolitan futuristic region like Tokyo 
And then we have plenty of the pop culture, like manga and anime there, like Akihabara and Ikebukuro or something like that. Uh, but at the same time, we have uh, mountains and forests and uh, uh, historical places like uh, old shrines and temples. And, uh, and uh, we have beautiful uh, cherry blossom and the leaves. And, uh, so you, depends on your taste and the preference, you can enjoy many things like, uh, well, food. Uh, nature or technology, uh, yeah. So the yeah, by visiting uh, many places, especially in Tokyo, you can enjoy Japan pretty much. And uh, and uh, I recommend you to enjoy the diversity of the country. Is it uh, something in uh, Japanese uh, culture, this diversity, maybe history, uh, something Japanese that influenced the language? Mm -hmm. uh, is it something that you can name? I don't know. <laughs> There's no control. But uh, uh, one thing, so that in Japanese, we have some, some kind of the... Uh, the the sen sentence chaining, like uh, uh, people do something, then do something like that. So that this is kind of similar to method chaining in Ruby. So that uh, maybe this is one uh, influence from the J Japanese language f to Ruby. What else? Uh, Japan is relatively a uh, wealthy country, so that we had some kind of, some kind of the, uh, we, some of us didn't have to work too hard to, to, to sustain our lives. So the, that allows me to work on the open source software, which do not make money at all. We don't sell open source software, but uh, we can, you know, we can sustain our lives uh, by other day jobs or maybe uh, our sponsor, uh, from support from our sponsors. So that, that, could, that could help me to work on, that could help us, actually our, contrib our contributors, uh, including our contributors work on uh, Ruby to make better technology. What else? Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's I can think of. <laughs> is it anything in the life of language author that is not obvious to uh, outside, uh, something uh, unique that uh, you can share? Okay, one thing is, uh, um, Despite what others feel, so the creating uh, a, a language is now really a difficult task. So the you know the, the computer science major students uh, take a class for the the language implementation, and then probably every CS uh, graduate can write uh, their own programming language. So that it's technically it's not that difficult, but uh, at the same time, uh, pe people don't understand uh, the nature of designing language. Uh, the language is kind of like a scaffold of the mind of thinking. So that it's same to the human language like Russian and Japanese, English, and a programming language like Ruby, Python, JavaScript, whatever. So that it helps our mind. That's the primary purpose of the programming languages. So the, the programming language should have the policy or principle to help out the, our thinking uh, in some somewhat. So that Ruby is focusing on productivity and the uh, joy of programming. So there are other programming languages 
for example, uh, focusing on probably a simplicity or maybe the performance or something like that. But, uh, each programming language has different uh, policy and design. And uh, if you feel comfortable with the Ruby's policy, so that Ruby is your language. <laughs> it was Yukihira Matsumoto and Grigory Petrov at Ruby Russia 2019. Thank you for watching.